for the love of God, stay away from the Dippin' Dots! Oh, no. Oh, not the Dippin' Dots! The damn Dippin' Dots didn't do anything to anybody! Good morning, sweet world! And welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network. Wednesday, March 4th. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, Tass Mellis. Hey, everybody. Hey, Tassie. We got the bearded one, Trey Kirby. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. International man of mystery, taking it to the wood shop, Lee Ellis. <laughs> Friend. Mm, <laughs> Lee Lee. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, making the magic happen, it's JD. Hello. There he is, and here we are. Guys, follow us on social media, both Twitter and Instagram, at No Dunks Inc., so you can see Lee's wood shop doppelganger. <laughs> this one is unreal. Even you agree it looks like you. When I saw it in the stories there, I thought, holy hell, that's me. And then when it came full screen, I was like, wow, it's not quite me, but it's pretty darn close can you uh build yourself a a birdhouse or something like that no but uh as trey mentioned yesterday on the uh on the beach seven show i think it was about ikea furniture i can put some of that stuff okay. together okay. You know, so, <laughs> same thing close enough <laughs> you guys know we're on facebook at facebook.com slash no dunks inc well i guess it's official we're now on facebook and email us your nba questions and comments to no dunks at the you said it there lee we hit the beach yesterday another classic Topics included um, Middleton and McCollum and Beal as go-to guys. Whether Rudy Gobert is worth a Supermax contract. We got into team captains. We talked about guards, um, elite defensive guards, maybe winning defensive player of the year. You talked a bunch of tennis. I did, yes. Dropped a bunch of tennis knowledge on us <laughs> and so much more. So that one's up. We dropped that a day earlier, so go check out that Beach at Steppin' podcast. And, I mean, check it out on YouTube solely for the fact to see JD's unbelievable uh, yeah. Beach Steppin' opener. Yeah, Firefest. Yeah. Firefest 2. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Nice. You didn't even tell any of us here in the office. I'm just nah. like, oh, okay, let's see if this works. Make sure it's fine. I'll blast it out. And like, oh, my God, this is incredible. Yeah, sometimes I like to spring things on you. Yeah. How did you find a clip of a man's toes walking in the sand? Uh, That's what I want to know. Uh, it's a website that uh, that has free footage for people to use. Uh, <laughs> footage. Footage. Yeah. footage. footage. Uh, footage. Uh, and I don't. I don't know, but I don't think that's a, a man's foot. Ooh. I think no. it might be a woman's foot. That's a man, baby. <laughs> well, I don't know. Wow. Don't know. My friend, old eight toes, offered to uh, be on that if you want me to get him to send in a clip of him <laughs> strolling on the beach. There, I think Katie. we're good. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> we are good. Hard pass on that. <laughs> but thank you. Just saying, it's a, it's a show for our listeners and our fans, and sometimes they want to participate and contribute. Yeah. So, you know. All right. That's well, if, if he's willing to get a, a pedicure, maybe. <laughs> Okay. That, well, that was more gross than the actual just eight toes is the state of his toenails to me. God. I, I hate looking at people's feet. Mm. I hate looking at my own feet, let alone other people's feet. You got crazy feet. Man. I do have crazy do. feet. Well, they, okay, that'll be the pick and payoff. I got to record my weird feet walk, walking on the beach. Oh, <laughs> pretty good, actually. People will be like, what? How is your foot go that angle? Uh, all right, well, we're going to get into is this news. I mean, last night we had both LA teams picking up convincing wins uh, both the Lakers and the Clippers the Nuggets dropped one to the Warriors Jamal Murray said no that's on me that's my bad that's my bad whoops my bad Uh, the Raps snapped their three game losing streak in Phoenix the Kings are still alive they have sole possession now of the number nine spot in the Western Conference just three games back from Memphis but the big news was Karis LeVert so let's get to is this news yeah the first one guys from ESPN Karis LeVert torches the Celtics for 51 carries the nets to an overtime win is this news it's news baby why because it's time to watch karis lavert in the playoffs as a number one guy hey i'm pumped i am excited to watch karis lavert as a number one guy when it comes to the playoffs he averaged 21 points last year in the postseason right. in a five-game set against the Philadelphia 76ers. He was coming off the bench for part of that, and now he's thrust into this role. I like watching him because he's got a kind of a herky-jerky game, mm-hmm. and he's unique. Watching so many games a night, he kind of stands out uh, the way he plays, and Kevin Durant, his teammate, tweeted about it. He was pumped watching him drop 51 points. And I know I might be pumping myself up to watch a sub-500 team go into the playoffs, <laughs> sure. give myself a reason to watch those first, uh, the first round in the Eastern Conference. But I was always, I was always pumped to watch uh, Karis LeVert shine, and it's interesting him as sort of the number three guy in the pecking order, most likely with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving there. But this guy, as as we saw, 
dropping 40 for the first time in his career and then dropping 50, he can do it. Wow, that was wild. Celtics were up 17 yeah. at the fourth quarter, and then it was Karis LeVert time. He outscored the Celtics 37-36 to 36 in uh, you know the fourth quarter and then into overtime where he scored all the points. Yeah, the hot hand theory was proven last night for sure because some of those shots he was hitting, that step back three, was just like, I'm so hot I can just throw yeah. it at the hoop right now and it's going in. I love to have an eagle on the court oh, too. He was oh, he was awesome. God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so good. he's a one-man wrecking He's crew. a machine! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got it stuck on automatic! <laughs> yeah, it's so good. It's so, but you're right, he had that one. He had like, you know when you're accidentally banking crazy yeah. shots home that you're on just one of those uh, one of those nights where you're in the zone because he had that one too. And, you know, the three crucial free throws there to send the game to overtime. Oh, yeah. In- incredible because he missed one not too long ago, uh, not too sh- uh, prior to that. He missed a, f- a free throw, but they got the rebound and it wasn't him who put it in. Someone else put it in um, to give them a sort of a three-point play on that anyway. But yeah, to step up and hit those with 0.2 seconds to go was incredible. And Marcus Smart fouled him. Well, no, yeah, I was going to say, what do yeah. you think about the foul call? No, no uh, Marcus Smart was, you know, livid after the game. He had to be escorted off the floor. I mean, he's probably, yeah. probably going to get a nice he's fine here coming his that, way because yeah. uh, he was upset with that call. He then fouled out. Um, yeah, what did you think of that call? You thought it was a that foul? That was a foul. There's no question of foul. Like, you look up close, he racks him across the arm there. So yeah. that's a foul. He and put his hand in the cookie jar. And, and he the didn't pro- need to. He was frustrated because they blew a 21-point lead. You know, that, this game, you said 17 points at three-quarter time. It looked like the game was over there. But they had some problems because Kemba Walker obviously didn't play in in, uh, overtime because he was at his minutes restriction there Tatum didn't play the game Brown got injured. Yeah, hamstring. And then uh, Marcus Smart fouled out as well. So and this, Gordon Hayward got injured too. Gordon Hayward got injured. So this was just an awful game for the Celtics in that respect. And he was frustrated, but he's going to get a, I don't know what the fine is, probably 35 grand for that one for failing to leave, or not failing to leave the court, but just abusing their officials or whatever it was. I don't think he fouled him, actually. I think he got ball, and then he hit his arm afterward yeah. when you look at it. But it looks bad because there's multiple guys surrounding a shooter, and it's kind of hard. He, you, he definitely puts his hand in there, but Marcus Smart... He knows he's a great defender, so he's like, I'm going to go, right I'm gonna go get yeah, this it's ball. It's like Iguodala-like, right? Yeah. It's just those guys that are so good at just popping the ball out. Yeah. But and, and that, that did, all but said, you had three Celtics around yeah. him. You are up. He's got to hit another miracle shot. You probably shouldn't reach it. Yeah, yeah, but I right. think the referee is just saying, there's three bodies there. It's a foul. And there's a <laughs> flailing of arms going yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, and it looks like contact, and the the play is kind of the ref is kind of behind the play just because yeah, exactly. of where he's standing it's a tough call uh, but I mean to make those three free throws at the loneliest place on earth pretty impressive <laughs> yeah and I mean the Nets are going to finish seventh or eighth seed you know they're going to be playing against a really good team in the first round of the playoffs but between Lavert and Spencer Dinwiddie they got guys who can make plays and they could at least steal another game in a first round series I would think yeah I, uh, I'm praying uh, or I was very happy I guess I should say with the Nets pulling this off uh, the Celtics take the L, the Raptors win in Phoenix, and why I'm super pumped, because not only do the Raptors maybe, you know, help their chances of keeping the second seed, okay, I want a 2-7 Raptors-Nets game. I, I, I oh, want that yeah. series. I mean, I'm fl- hell, fly up to Brooklyn, watch a game, why not take it in in the first round? So right now, that's what it would be if the playoffs started today, but there's obviously like 45 days until we get to that. Um, one more thing with Lavert, though. Uh, you know, I saw Zilla write this in, in, his, in his newsletter. Is this sort of a type of statement game that can make another GM fall in love with a guy like Karis LeVert? And I think what Ziller's getting at here is, is there, you know, is there eventually going to be enough room on the floor with four scorers in this system? Guys that need the ball really in their hands. KD, Kyrie, no-brainers. And then LeVert. And then Spencer Dinwiddie, because that's mm. how he plays too. And you wonder, you know, will they, will they look to move one of those guys, probably a Dinwiddie or a LeVert, in the offseason for, for other pieces, you know, d- either defensive pieces or just other players to maybe fit the idea moving forward for Brooklyn. I think it's possible. One of them has to go, I think. You think having the four yeah. that play that type yeah. of role, similar roles, can't do S- Simply because you, those two superstars that are coming in, there's no question that one of those two guys is getting the shots and the looks and the, and the game-winning shots down the stretch. Yeah. So um, And Levert, uh, yeah, I think there is going to be plenty of interest out there. He's he's shown that he's a capable player. I mean, he's not a, he's not a number one guy by any means, but he could be that Chris Middleton to somebody else out there in the right situation. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I definitely... Uh, and, and Spencer Dinwiddie's the same. I I mean, he's, he knows where he falls in the pecking order. He might be okay with that role, but I think other teams will also look at the way that he has improved and kept himself in the league and earned a big contract that, that someone else will take a flyer on him, for sure. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because we're seeing with the Thunder that you can play three ball handlers, and it's helpful to have a lot of guys out there who can make plays, but four perimeter guys playing with, I guess, maybe Jared Allen, that doesn't seem to add up numbers-wise, but Karis LeVert has had a pretty tough time staying on the court during his True. basketball career. He's played fewer than 60 games in three of his four NBA seasons and played fewer than 20 games his last two college seasons. That's one of the reasons he was available at the end of the first round of the draft, so... I mean, maybe you keep them all. You've already got all those guys under contract. People are going to get dinged up. Kyrie Irving, we've seen, has yeah. gotten dinged up the past couple of seasons as well. Perhaps it helps having a whole bunch of guards just ready to go as soon as they're ready. Because, I mean, we were talking about Karis LeVert possibly making an all-star team during the first half of the season last year. He got hurt. D'Angelo Russell stepped up, and he became the all-star. So yeah. the talent has always been there. It's the availability that has been the problem. I know you want to see uh, Brooklyn, Toronto in the first round. Sure. But I I just want to see everybody healthy, and I'm a little scared about Jalen Brown's hamstring injury. You mentioned Gordon Hayward went out. Ken, yep. Kemba Walker's not playing in back-to-backs right now. Not so worried about those. But Jalen Brown has sustained a hamstring injury before, am I not mistaken? I, I have a vision, uh, uh, an image of him grabbing his hammy before. Uh, and so hammies don't like those whatsoever, and they can just linger. I, yep. I want to see a full-strength eight-team squad going into uh, the Eastern Conference playoff picture, especially the Celtics, especially a guy in Jalen Brown who said, I'm going to step up in the postseason. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be good. And, uh, yeah, I just want to see, especially because the, the Daniel Tice situation, that's their weakest spot. I want to see them strong at the other four spots. Trivia question for you guys with Lavert going for 51. Can you name now the other 10 players this year that have gone for 50-plus? Because Lavert is the 11th. Kyrie is correct. He did twice. Yeah. Lillard and Harden. Yeah. Harden did it five times. Lillard did it four times. D'Angelo uh, Russell did it, didn't he? He did. Yes. Good call, Tass. Giannis. Yep. You're missing another guy that did it twice. LeBron. No, uh, LeBron uh, has not done Anthony it. Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis did it once. Like, he just did it, this guy, twice, back to back. Oh, Devin Booker. Huh. No. No, no, no. Uh, Bradley Beal. Bradley, yeah, Bradley Beal. Beal. Yeah. You're your number one guy, oh, no. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, then you got a couple more here. I think you've got three left that you haven't named because AD was one of them. Did you? MB? No. Nope. You got 49. No. All um, sort of, you got two guards, really, and then a guard slash forward. Somebody already mentioned his name. Wondering if Karis LeVert could be this man. Oh, oh Middleton. Chris Middleton. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Two oh, more. Yeah. One very easy. I Trey Young. Trey Young, my man. And then this is the most difficult one. You do forget this guy went for 50. Zach Levine. No. Ooh, no, he didn't. No, 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 no. Um, this. One of Tass's favorite players of all time. Wesley no. Matthews. No. What a hot Eric idea. Gordon did Eric it. Gordon. Oh, yeah. Weird. Yeah. Weird. There you go. 11 guys have gone for 50 plus. A couple of those guys going for 60 plus. But uh, I, I just one more note on that, you know, the idea of trading one of these four guys. And again, it's not going to be Katie or Kyrie, very unlikely. So it's going to be Dinwiddie or Levert. With Levert, he is amazing on like pull up threes like so he has to sort of have the ball so far he's proven he has to have the ball to really look efficient and look like a um, you know a borderline all-star guy he needs to improve especially when katie and kyrie in there like on catch and shoot three pointers his percentage is like 28 percent compared to like 43 percent when he's pulling up wow and he's got it yeah and those are where you're gonna get a lot more looks because there's gonna be a lot more attention on these star guys and you're gonna be open and and there's be no reason really in my opinion like if you're a good shooter like you can bump those numbers up and you can get more comfortable but some guys they just need that rhythm of the ball in their hands and it's different coming at them as if they're like jj reddick yeah exactly right uh but perhaps it'll be a little bit of a different training program we've seen the nets for the past couple of seasons player development has been one of their strengths mm -hmm. uh they basically saved joe harris's career um so perhaps yep. you know they say you've done a great job learning how to shoot threes off the dribble next one we're going off the pass our next headline from sports illustrated tim duncan picks up his first career win as Spurs acting head coach. Is this news? Well, it's fi it's fake news, actually, because he doesn't get the win. It's dumb, go on, isn't it? Go on to explain that. So because Pop uh, was out for personal reasons, according to the NBA uh, coaching register, it still counts as a win for Popovich. You don't actually get any interim... Oh, he's not even interim, really. He's like just a fill-in coach yeah. for that game. So <laughs> Duncan's record is naught and naught. Nil nil. Yeah, it Not is walking. weird though. You see all these headlines, yeah. and it's everybody saying crediting Duncan on his first, you know, career yeah. coaching win. But you're right, it's not. No, it's a similar to what happened with uh, Luke Walton taking for over sure. for Steve yeah. Kerr and going like 39 and four or something <laughs> like that. None of those counted for him. 
Um, so it's fake news. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was a good one, I guess, for the for the Spurs because they're shorthanded as well at the moment. No Lamarcus Aldridge, no Yaka Pertle, and they were down huge early yeah. against the Hornets, and they came back and wasn't the prettiest finish to the game. But uh, <laughs> that's. I think it's classic that Dick, Tim Duncan's first game is a one-point win. You know, just <laughs> win by the most minimal amount. That's all you have to do. Get that W and go on. He had his uh, little scrum after the game too because he's not someone who loves to talk to the media. So I was interested to see if he was going to be pop-like in that. But he wasn't. He was actually, uh, you know, he, he answered and he spoke in depth a little bit. Someone sort of asked him about coming out of retirement and that was the only question that he, that he shot down because he was like... What are, what are, we, are we talking about the game or are we talking about our other interviews or something here? I'm just here for fun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he did say this, too. It's night and day to be in the big boy chair. Truth be told, though, I wasn't in the big boy chair. I had other assistant coaches making the calls, and I was the one standing there screaming at people. Mitch prepped the game. Becky and Will, they made the calls. I was just standing there. Yeah. Well, That's I, classic, Tim. We did it by committee. Classic. Timmy and maybe James Borrego who's used to be a Spurs assistant and is the Charlotte Hornets head coach that they're playing against maybe he knew all of Timmy and oh. Becky's and Mitchie's and Willie's calls <laughs> it's possible I think the the news from this is some people were a little shocked maybe some even a little angry I guess that Tim Duncan got the the role as the stand-in head coach the one that could make the the challenges and be standing up there <laughs> the one who gets the yell over Becky Hammond I think yeah. that is what people were like, what? Why? I don't What's think that's a fair bit of news because when Pop got ejected, it was Tim Duncan who took over as well, and Tass Stradamus called it. Tim Duncan is going to be the next Spurs head coach. It definitely feels like it. He's being chosen as the stand-up yelling guy every single time yeah. that there is a chance for this. So I wouldn't imagine that Popovich is just putting him out there to have a famous spur as uh, as the interim head coach so whoever who knows when pop will actually leave but it seems like duncan would be the guy to slide in there rather than becky hammond which is kind of what it seemed like for a while before duncan joined the staff mm. i know that's what twitter was raging about yeah. last night but i don't think popovich is kneecapping becky hammond in any way in her possibility of her getting a, a job anywhere else by putting tim duncan in this role and I think Tim Duncan has put in a lot of time with that organization and brought, basically brought that organization back to, uh, I mean, to a height that it never had reached. So, yes, Becky Hammond's been there for a couple of years, uh, but Timmy's been there for a long time, and Becky will still get a job. I, I, I just don't think it, I, I don't think it hampers that that right. possibility whatsoever. And so, yeah, I think it's a, a seniority thing in, in a way as well. But it's it's odd because Tim Duncan probably wouldn't be a head coach for any other team. It's, it sure mm. seems like. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And, but Becky Hammond is there and, and, coach and the could team be hired. And in, in, obviously, summer leagues and yeah. stuff like that. Has and, the experience and, way more than Duncan does. And we yeah. assume yeah. she'll be the first female head coach in the NBA. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's a, the, the, maybe that is what Pop is also thinking here. Maybe, like, I don't want to just throw her in, like, some random March game here against the Hornets, you know. Uh, it almost should be a bigger deal than just that. Maybe, right. uh, maybe I have no idea if there's any truth to this, but the idea of like, yeah, it's not even going to count on her record or anything. She's going to get her own team. She is going to be a head coach, I believe, and I think Pop does, in this league, and it will be, you know, her own squad, her own franchise, uh, so to speak, not here you go, just like jump in there. That's what I would think, too. Yeah, I, I think there is something to that as well, because as, as uh, you mentioned there too, Trey, when he did get ejected, I think everyone thought, well, Becky's going to now get her first chance and he didn't, he, instead it was Tim Duncan. So maybe Pop is waiting for the right situation where she gets the full maybe. respect and accreditation for a head coach and not just this sort of tokenism where it doesn't count. It doesn't actually count. So right. maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it is just, you know, Tim Duncan's a Spurs legend. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, he got the, uh, you know, quote unquote W, though it will not count <laughs> yeah. officially on his record. You will not see that on Basketball References coaching page. All right, our next one. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. Back to ESPN. Spike Lee done watching the Knicks at MSG this season. Is this news? It's big news, really, isn't it? I mean, he's been there, he said, for 28 years. Yep. He's been going to games, and uh, he has been apparently in a bit of a dispute there with James Dolan and the Knicks staff about where he should be entering the arena. And it blew up on, uh, on Tuesday, or Monday night, I guess. And uh, Spike went on first take and said, that's it, I'm done, I'm not going there anymore. So... What's he going to do with those tickets that he pays? I guess uh, he already sold them, is uh, the word on yeah. the street. Yeah, this, so this was breaking like during the recording of yesterday's show mm. for us. The idea of Spike going on uh, first take, and then not long after that, the unbelievable press release from the Knicks. I mean, they are just on fire with these, and this was just 
Oh, chef's kiss, this one, <laughs> uh, with the grainy photo attached of Dolan shaking Spike Lee's hand, and then the whole thing of like, no, Spike is making this a big deal. This is laughable. We've asked him a million times. Just come in a different entrance. But it's it is, it's crazy. After the Knicks actually picked up a win, oh my God, Leon Rose is there now as the as the president. We were talking him up yesterday. You know, we had the poll like. Do you have any sort of confidence in him maybe to turn this around, Leon Rosen? Like, some of us, like, meh, some of us maybe a little bit. Can't get much <laughs> lower. And then it somehow got worse. Because Every vote is downgraded. I mean, if you voted meh, you now voted L- low. Low. <laughs> if you voted low, you now voted good joke. Yeah. So I'm on to good joke because obviously nothing is going to change. Spike Lee also says he was set up with the picture. He says that he thought he had, there was a garden photographer just waiting to capture the moment that those two shook just so that they could have... <laughs> a press release about it. It's honestly incredible, but I mean, what? Spike Lee went to the wrong entrance for the first time in 30 years? Come on. Who And who gives a crap? That's all they have. Exactly. That's all the Knicks I have know. is Spike Lee and 28 like, what's seasons up? The of The most him. recognizable guy in the entire arena? Sure, come on in this way. How hard is that? It's nuts. They're so lucky that they play in such a giant city in New York, and people will still go play there at some point. Because otherwise, if it was a small market team that releases press releases about press releases over and over and over and tries to to put out the receipts, as Zach Harper put, with these photos, hey, 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 he went in the wrong entrance. Hey, it's all on him. Like, d- forget about the details. For, uh, r- r- those, those should be thrown out. They just keep messing up over and over and over again. I don't want to get into the soap opera stuff about, about Spike Lee and all that. Leon Rose should apologize, and James Dolan, because we know James Dolan isn't going to apologize. No. He, should, he should just come out and say, like, I would hope that that's happening behind the scenes, but he should make it public as well. He should say, Someone, this is my first order of business. I'm going to apologize to this guy because right. we messed the heck up. He's been paying literally millions it's like $10 of dollars, million dollars for seats. <laughs> and so when he doesn't care about these next you know, 20 games or whatever, 10 home games. He doesn't care about that. Like that's he should donate it and that's great and don't go back. Uh, it's it's a shame. It really is a shame. Yeah, I mean Spike went on after the press release. He went on a radio show in New York, uh, the Michael K show, and said the whole statement was just a bold faced lie. I mean Spike is saying Dolan is just straight up lying because of his ego and because he's a madman and it's insane. And like that press release, you can't convince me otherwise that. Basically, James Dolan probably walked into a room or picked up his phone with whoever was in the PR department and said, all right, write this. You know, this is laughable. I mean, to the point where it says Jim (laughs) in the damn press release. (laughs) It doesn't even say, like, Mr. James Dolan. Like, Uh. all these press releases are so uptight and they're so formal. It says Jim. And even Spike is calling James Dolan, Mr. Dolan. I know. Spike remains respectful yeah, yeah. despite all this, calling him it by is, Mr. I went on uh, the Raptors Republic podcast yesterday with, with Sam Folk. We were talking about this because it had just happened. And Sam was like, this feels like someone wrote a blog post about like 20 funny things that'll happen to the Knicks this year. And it would be like <laughs> number you know five or six yeah. on the list. Uh, Spike Lee gets into a Dolan and there's a back and forth. And he, and he, you know, like that sounds like such a like, huh, that's a funny joke. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. It'd be a great one. I have a little chuckle move on. And it actually came true. Well, the incident there with Charles, Bar- uh, Charles Oakley, one of the most beloved Knicks players of all time. That was ugly. And that got even uglier again this season. And now the most recognizable and beloved fan of the Knicks is, is also Spike kind of... Spike Lee, I mean, you watched the first take. He was so pissed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he is so fired up. Like, yeah. he's like, let me finish. He's yelling at Molly. He's like, he's just like, let me get this off my chest. Like, I have been the good soldier being a Knicks fan for, you know, 25 plus years. And yeah. not that he hasn't taken, like, of course, like everybody, like, shots at what the hell the Knicks are doing yeah. or who they brought in. And, and I'm sure that's gotten to Dolan. I'm sure he hates that, hearing all that. But uh, he was so upset because he's like... You're right, Tass. He's like, what are we talking about here? This is, are you, uh, yeah. this, is, this is insanity. I know. He has been watching bad teams for a long time, <laughs> paying a lot yeah, of money for yeah. it. And, and it's up to him to, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to, uh, I don't know, I don't even know what to say. I'm not trying to judge. He can pay for his money or he can pay for his seats or not pay for his seats, but you treat him like. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is maybe the easiest situation to not botch. The guy has yeah. been sitting in the same place for three decades. It doesn't. He could parachute into the arena and be like, "All right, Spike, we got your seat right here. Who cares?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, what, who cares? what entrance so, he chose? Yeah, why, why, why are we nitpicking? Yeah, because so the video leaks on the Monday night. You hear Spike yelling with security, like, "What the hell's going on?" Everybody at the time thought, "Oh my God, Spike Lee actually got ejected," for, like, "Oh, not like Oakley." But yeah. then you see him in his seats, and I was like, "Okay," and it was like. Then Spike goes on and tells his story. But the Knicks should have just been like, 
They, they, he just can't let it lie, right? Dolan has to have the last word. He has to try to. So he can't just say, misunderstanding, our bad, Spike is a legend, you know, been coming for 30 plus years. He just can't, he he can't, can't swallow it. his goddamn pride and just say that. Even if he was wrong, like, so to speak, like, okay, yeah, we told Spike to come in this entrance, whatever. Like, if you really want to, like, say, okay, follow the rules, man. You're just because you're a celebrity, you should follow the rules. But, like, just, even if that's true, why blast that <laughs> to everyone? Like, this dumbass press release. It's crazy. It, 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 there's no explanation for it. I mean, it, it's the, the Knicks have been taking so many hits in these last two seasons. You would think someone would say... Listen, just do the right thing here. Just say nothing. <laughs> do the right thing. But like he the can't. movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I had just gotten done like mere hours prior here on the podcast saying, giving credit to Leon Rose for actually sort <laughs> of dying. doing nothing, right? Yeah. Like for not having a crazy pes- press conference saying, oh, I am now the president and we're going to make the playoffs next year and we're going to be bringing all these names. He actually did the, the, the flip side of that, which was like, just say nothing. Just show up to the game. Wow, you got a nice win. RJ Barrett game winner. Perfectly played, in my opinion, and then, you know, an hour or two later, mm-hmm. this happens. This even evoked a, a bit of a, an opinion tweet from Adrian Wojnarowski, yes. who's usually yeah. a newsman. Yes. yes, usually a newsman. He he said, "Welcome to the Knicks, Leon Rose." Simple as that. It's unfortunate, but Leon Rose has this on his plate now, and I agree, he shouldn't be you know doing press conferences, etc. But in this instance, I think he's he should try and put on a good face oh, for yeah. the Knicks now, and say yeah. so, and say something. But uh, it's unfortunate. It's but you, unfortunate. but but anyone there in the Knicks organization doing that risks, you know, getting blowback from Dolan, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing. He could come out. Leon Rose could say, you know, apologies to Spike Lee, misunderstanding, we'll move and blah 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 blah. And you don't know what that will do to Dolan. Like Fine. he's just a wild. Card. Honestly, if you come out and you say we love Spike Lee, he he is an ambassador for our team. We messed up. So sorry. And then James Dolan fires you the next day. You're better off. Yeah, for yeah. It. yeah, you're, you're right. right. You're like who cares? You're probably yeah. right. Yeah, it's just like Lee said. Like Ozzy Davis, do the right thing. <laughs> well done. Yeah. All right. Next. I, had to, I had to look up that movie. <laughs> Make sure that Ozzy Davis was in there. <laughs> well done. All right. Next one here. Next headline. Let's keep it going. This one from Clutch Points. Ah, it used to be a favorite headline of ours back in the day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah clutch point to you, my friend. <laughs> um, the headline, Daryl Morey rips NBA broadcasters who are hate-watching games. Is this news? This is uh, pulled from Daryl Morey's appearance on FS1's mm. First Things First, the other show with first in the title. Um, mm-hmm. A couple of things Morey said, uh, you know, this idea... And I'll read it to you here. Right now, Maury said, if you tune into a lot of NBA telecasts, the announcers are hate-watching their own game. It's crazy. You'll tune in, and they'll be like, well, what's happening here? They're shooting too many three-pointers. Back in my day, and then the other thing that happens, you tune in, and they go, well, why are we watching tonight? Nothing matters until the playoffs. Nothing. People are like, okay, I'm going to go back to CSI. Uh, and he had a lot more to say, Maury did. <laughs> He's but not is, wrong. But is this news? Yeah. You agree with this? It kind of needs to be said. People, uh, color commentators specifically, even in the studio, it's happening everywhere where guys just aren't willing to adapt to the new game. And they're not really selling it. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's sort of a fine line because you don't want to edit these guys and, and censor what they're saying, the, these men and women out there. You don't want to say, hey, you've got you to gotta sell the game. Don't tell it like it is. Tell, uh, tell, don't give your opinion. Just, just, just put on a happy face. So it's a fine line. That being said, they're not willing to adapt. They're not willing to just flow with the game and see where it goes. I'm worried of that turning into an old guy. That's why I'm wearing the sweater. I'm, I'm you look definitely cool worried. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Youthful. worried about being old and not being able to adapt, like a lot of these guys on the broadcast or in studio. It's happening. His team gets picked on more so than yeah. every other yeah. team. Yeah. I would say that's a part of it here. Yeah. yeah. The James Harden, the James villain, Harden, villain and, role and them shooting threes. Yeah, yeah. but it, but it's something that's happening. The broadcasters don't sell the game. He went on to say, "Well, we're just going to wait for the playoffs." As that's a line from a lot of the broadcasters he's quoting, which is entirely true. They do say that, and they don't, you know, they don't jump in like we've talked about trying to find a little enjoyment in these regular season games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't do that, and so. It's happening a lot, and it's a trickle-down effect. A lot of the big-name guys do it. A lot of the color commentators guys do it. And it's also just getting old, and that's the worrisome part. It feels like Jeff Van Gundy's complaining about something every game. It really does on, on the ESPN. And, uh, you know, he and Mark Jackson have had a good run, but honestly, Mike Breen and Dora should be there number one option at ESPN. No no doubt about it anymore because Jeff was funny at the start, but now he just seems to 
he's always hating on something or complaining or whining or he's just got that negative attitude yeah it, it has changed um and he's been a great commentator there's no no doubt about that but i think it's uh i, I find whenever it's breen and doris it's always much more an enjoyable watch for me Doris is very intelligent. She's very smart. And she and can... the enthusiasm comes off yeah. of her oh, as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's yes. the other thing is that you're comparing like the number one uh, basketball commentators in Van Gundy and Barkley is always a guy who's like, no chance I'm watching this game. I'm watching Bones. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. Those are things that come out of his mouth for a decade at a time. You compare him to Tony Romo, who instantly became the best football commentator. And you can tell that he loves watching football. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a difference. You need you need to like the job you're doing <laughs> rather than just going on and complaining. Yeah, and uh, another quote that Maury said on this appearance on, on First Takes, or <laughs> First Takes First, <laughs> I'm going to mash the two shows together now. He said people tune in and they're be t- being told how they shouldn't watch and how it's not a fun game to watch. It's bizarre to me. The NFL would never let it happen, and I don't understand it. And he does. It's not everybody. It's not all broadcast for sure, but it, there are, like you guys are pointing out, many that it's like, you're literally sort of watching it and they're being told, like, why are you watching mm. this? Or this isn't good. Or, you know, this was better 20 years ago. And or stuff I like could that. do that. Yeah. yeah. And it is strange when it's a great point. When you think about it, you're like, that is, that would never happen in the NFL. Certainly there not. There is no doubt about that. I mean, you are trying to sell the product. So why don't you try and sell the damn product mm-hmm. uh, a little bit better? I, I do think the NBA does a good job of, again, not censoring their guys. Yeah, you're right. And that's like, the fine line. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think there should be some credit there. But, Jeff A. Gundy was a good, good, good broadcaster for a long time. And now he's just a little grumpy in the pants. Yeah. And maybe it's just because he's done it for so long. Uh, but I don't, I don't think it's because he hates the game I, I, at all. I just think he's just a little bit just a little bit hardened by doing it for so long. Maybe oh, he just needs a little be- refresher. He needs a little Listerine. Uh, well, what are those things called? Those uh, are things you put on your tongue? Spicy a mitts. little palate cleanser? Spicy mints. <laughs> I, I meant those like little... Uh, yeah, one, breath strips? Yeah, 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 those sort of things that melt on your tongue. Like just a little refresher. The other Jeff. part of this, he's been doing it so long, he said it. He's also, he's become a character now, right? Like yeah. That is sort of his bit and the rest of the broadcast you know steer him also towards that and and you you just take that on i think more and it's it's just not enjoyable and you're right Tess. i don't want all these broadcasts like oh the nba is the greatest sport in the world and like everything is ho-hum and oh oh my god it's the best no you got to be a little critical and you got to be able to knock it down a peg or question things when you want be it the officiating be it teams whatever decisions but you can still have that enthusiasm, I think was the word you used for Doris, like that you that it comes through just in your you're you're only you're only critiquing it because you love it so much and you want to see it want it to be better and you want more people to watch it and enjoy it. Right? That's why I think Stan Van Gundy has been so good. He's, He's been good. teaching you about basketball and he obviously still cares about the way it's being played as well. But I mean, it's like how many times can we hear a jump shooting team can't win in the playoffs? That's ridiculous to keep hearing the same take over and over when we've seen jump shooting teams win in the playoffs. So I don't know. I mean, there's just got to be some sort of middle ground where you're like, yeah, I'm still able to critique the game. But how hard would it be to say, look how amazing all these guys are shooting in back in my day? We had two guys on our team who who were allowed to shoot threes. Now everybody is. That's actually awesome. Yeah, that's a lot more skill rather than saying, oh, uh, I didn't shoot threes, So these guys shouldn't. That's that's ridiculous. Yeah. And and Maury's larger point about fans tuning into a game and then saying oh they don't want to watch me or they don't want me to watch the game or they're a little bit grumpy that the game was better in the past and they tune into CSI that larger point cannot be disputed sure it can be disputed why fans are turning off the game but at the same time they're turning off the game so uh, ratings are down and uh, I think Maury's points have to be listened to just like you know Barkley's points are listened to just like Jeff Van Gundy's points are listened to when they say this coach's challenge isn't working their points are valid yeah. they quite often are valid but like trey said the same sort of stuff about jump shooting oh there's there's these guys just uh, they, they do whatever they want i could score 50 in this league maybe but also uh, you know you you don't have pardon my uh Greg Oster tag hate. You don't have Greg Oster tag out there. <laughs> like you've you've got seven footers who can th- put it on the floor and do. Like it is a very very skilled game. And yeah, maybe the pendulum has to swing back a little bit more to a little bit of defense and a little bit more handsy. Uh, but we're in a good place, and uh, NBA fans just just want to be fans. And so sometimes sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it is a little bit uh, difficult for... I, I agree with Maury. Sometimes it just, it's just it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth watching some of these broadcasts. Just put us on the broadcast. Give yeah. no dunks their own... Uh, 
you know, we'll be uh, the whole crew, you know? We've Let's done do it before. It. We did one game. Yeah, but that was league. Summer League, so we don't have a record. Crushed really. it, though. We don't have a record. Yeah, it's like Tim Duncan. Oh, right? yeah. wow. And, and JD can produce the whole game. He's got, yeah. he's making all these cameras happen. He's this, this is a studio crew JD's in shaking here. His head. <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, come I on. You can JD, operate, uh, operate every camera. I know. Have him as a color commentator as well. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> Sideline report. You're going to hear some negativity there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we just don't want our NBA broadcasters to be like JD, who just don't want to be watching. <laughs> That's fair. We'd rather be watching a nice play. Uh, all right, one more headline here. This is one's from Bleacher Report. Zion Williamson cleared to play back-to-back games after knee injury recovery. Is this news? The Pelicans are going for it. They're going for it. They've uh, had a little bit of a blip in the radar. Lost three of the last four. And, Bad uh, loss last night yes, to the Wolves. Yeah, oh, not a lot of defense oh in that one. Oh, my God. You got to try on that end sometimes. Um, I hate I, to sound like a, you know, a curmudgeon here, but uh, <laughs> back in my day, there was a little defense played. 139, 134, and you're playing you know, for your playoff hopes here? Yeah. Come Com- on. Combined with the fact the Grizzlies have won a couple in a row, the Kings have won three, the Pelicans have just sort of slipped. They're four games back now of the Grizzlies. So I think I think David Griffin and the uh, and the Pelicans have decided, let's go for it. Let's the, Number eight is fine. Let's try to get it. And, uh, and that's the reason why. They're not just trying to bring Zion along just to get some reps and... and you know, maybe be overcautious. They're like, he's responding well. He's playing yeah. well. He's probably our best player already. Let's go for it. Yep. He'll play tonight in his first yep. back-to-back in Dallas. Yeah. And uh, that's our pick game a little bit later. Stay tuned for that. You want to hear some pick We got pick I guess you can just say that, uh, simply put, the Pelicans front office handled it well. And they... They sort of limited the expectations when he came back and they said, he's not playing in back-to-backs. Okay. Fine. Fine. We'll deal with that as, as fans. But... Uh, it's perfect now, right? They've they've they haven't decreased their expectations. They've elevated them by initially saying he's not going to play them, and now he's he's healthy. That's great news. That's the best part about this is that he's entirely healthy and he can play an actual NBA season. Yeah, and it took basically a month of being on the court. So good stuff for the Pelicans. Good stuff for Zion. Had another incredible game last night. Twenty five on ten and nineteen shooting. What's he going to do in the second night of a back-to-back? We'll see. We'll see how that leg holds up. We'll see how that new stride is working. Apparently, they're happy with the way he's walking. So, <laughs> nice I don't know. You need as much Zion as you can get, considering you missed half the season, two-thirds of the season. If they're going to make a playoff push, they want him out there. Cool that he actually can be. Uh, he was quoted after the game saying, this is one of those games we needed and didn't get, so this is a tough loss. That's absolutely right. You're like, you are you got to get some Ws here, and you got to get ones against the Wolves, and you should have just played a little defense because it was abysmal. Um, just no one really trying out there. It was very, very, uh, very at times a little crazy to watch more than anything because you're like, guys, you want to get in the playoffs, you got to get some stops here. But they turned the ball over 15 times and missed a ton of threes, the, the Pelicans did. Struggled at the free throw line too, left a lot of points on the board there. Um, but they're going to get like, he's going to play if he goes like from here on out. It, they have like after tonight, if you're going to count that one as a back-to-back set, which you should, I think there's like three more right. still on their schedule. And I know they have an easier schedule than a lot of these teams in this playoff race for the eight seed, but uh, you know, Back to back, still. I don't care who you're playing, really, in the, in this league. And Tass, you've already talked about it. March can be weird as it is, with uh, just victories or strange losses. It's just a strange part of the the calendar. Guys, uh, chill out. If you know you're a playoff team, you look at these uh, scrubs who aren't making the playoffs. We're better than that team. Yeah, you kind of just chill out. And the, yeah, I think I think a big part of it is the teams that aren't making the playoffs. They're just playing to their the best of their capabilities. There's no pressure. Yeah, I, there's I think no that, pressure. That's true. And they're still pretty good basketball players. So you combine those chilling versus this is fun. Basketball is fun with no pressure <laughs> whatsoever. And you, guys you see, playing for their careers at some points. You know, some yep. of these guys that have been like a ninth, a tenth, eleventh guy, they're getting burned. They're getting minutes uh, on some mm-hmm. of these squads. And this is when the random Knicks honestly thrive. It's like Chris <laughs> Copeland got a huge yeah. deal yeah. off playing well for a month and a half. Ron Baker, who else has been a Knicks legend for a month and a half? Trey Burke had a good yeah. run yeah. there. They thought he good was going to be the point guard of the future. Hit us up with your favorite random one month Knicks. <laughs> oh, because they are, are a lot of them. Oh, there's a lot. I loved Chris Copeland. And yeah. then I and then I watch him the next year. Oh my God. He moved like molasses out there when guys were actually trying on defense. Yeah. Uh, it was nice, though. He's going to the Pacers. You're like, this is exactly what they need, yeah. a stretch shooter? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Trier is, has sort of been yeah. that, although hopefully he works out. 
Yeah, so you've got the Grizzlies at 30 and 31 holding on to the eight seed. They're three up right now of the Kings, as you mentioned there, who have uh, put three wins together and are playing really well. <laughs> I mean, they're playing weird games. That one yeah. last night, a perfect example. They were up, uh, felt like 100 points at the half, and they gave it all away in one quarter to the Wizards and then got it going again, and Fox had a good game. Blazers are getting Damian Lillard back. Is that uh, still reported to go tonight? Yep. Is he coming He's back probable. tonight? He's probable tonight, so that's huge. They're a little bit behind the Kings. Spurs got that victory with Duncan there, and then, yeah, Pelicans dropped, the, dropped two in a row, and the Suns have dropped four in a row, and they're you know very – yeah, I, mean, I think the Suns we can write off. They're not they're not making the playoffs, and obviously the Wolves and the Warriors behind them are not as well. It's going to be a fun little race. All right, those are the headlines in Is This News. Lee, time for Tweet of the Night. Mm, tweet of the Night. Wow. Twitter. So before I get to the tweet, I thought I'd like to just reiterate to our listeners that you can now watch every episode of our show on YouTube. That's right. Which is great because JD does an incredible job putting that together and uh, making it a fun watch. And uh, again, you just want to check out the opening to the Beach Steppen uh, podcast yesterday. Just incredible stuff. Fire. Really, really good. Now on to the tweet. So <laughs> on yesterday's Beach Stepping, I actually talked about how Goran Ivanisevic won the greatest <laughs> oh men's boy. final of all time oh boy. Here we go. in 2001. There's an NBA tie in. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Uh, when he beat Pat Rafter in the five sets on a Monday. Great match. Well, and that's the greatest, sorry, the greatest slam Men, final. Men's Wimbledon final, yeah. I mean, Ever probably time. greatest slam final. I mean, it was wow. Just because it was a great match? Yeah, it went cause... five sets, went deep. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, Goran, you know, unseated, like a wild card, 125th in the world. He's a three-time finalist, like runner-up at Wimbledon. Pat Rafter, he I lost just... the final the year before to Pete Sampras. I mean... I just thought that like some... Uh, no disrespect to Goran Ivanisevic. Love the lefty. Yeah. <laughs> but but <laughs> no I just disrespect. I just thought there'd be a, you know, a, think... a big name versus big name. Yeah. Cause, well, cause Federer, seemed... Federer and Nadal. Federer and Nadal went pretty deep in 08. I think that went deep yeah, in like the Yeah, like three and a half, four, five-hour yeah, matches, those but they dudes. were they were two players at the top of their game at the time. I mean, I'm talking about Nobody the story. Nobody wants that. <laughs> the story, the narrative of Goran Ivanisevic. I okay. mean, you know. All right, Goran. Yeah. Um, so the match was great. And and a listener, Nick Zaccardi, also reminded me of just how awesome Goran's post-match <laughs> speech was. Yeah. And he tweeted to me. I'm not going to play the whole thing. But here are some of the best bits, including an NBA tie-in at the end. I don't know if it's a dream or not. If I'm going to wake up and then somebody's going to tell me you didn't win Wimbledon again. Uh, I don't know what to say. I was uh, three times in the final, but this is, this is just uh, unbelievable. This is too good. Thank you guys for everything. And uh, I would like to thank a couple of people also. My father, I know, I mean, if I lose today, I think your heart will definitely explode. But so I have to be careful. Thanks, Dad. Uh, to my... To my family back home, to my coach Mario, and all my supporters. And uh, one more thing: uh, 1993. I would like to dedicate this victory to a friend of mine. 1993, he died in a car accident. He was the best European basketball player. He played in NBA. His name was Dražen Petrovic. And this one is for you, man. If you see me. Rest in peace and thank you very much. He, he won that after being a runner-up three times, but also he shouts out uh, Drazen Petrovic at the end. He was a good ah, right. friend of Drazen, and uh, Drazen had passed away in 1993, eight years prior in a, in a motor vehicle accident. So, But it was just a very an emotional time for Goran, whose career was basically over. He came back and won. And again, the fact that we're now on YouTube... These tweets don't have to be solely audio. They can be visual. So you can go out and check out this tweet and you can see Yeah, Goran. we just knocked that one out of the park, didn't we? <laughs> you can see Goran there talking with the BBC's Sue uh, Barker. So great job. Uh, and, you know, it's NBA related. And again, someone tweeted it to me last night. So it counts. Um, you said, like, he was the wild card. I didn't yeah. realize he didn't win the wild card spot. You're literally just given it? They have some discretionary wild cards. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay, like, you're is... not ranked and they just throw... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and someone who... who has a record yeah. he was a three time finalist they're like okay we know he can play on yeah. grass and if you're injured <laughs> or you just you know whatever your circumstances were they like let's give this guy a wild card so every every tournament does that um, and Wimbledon I think they still do it they don't base the uh, seedings on the rankings they base it on your record and history at Wimbledon so Classic. you could be ranked number 10 in the world but if you have a great Wimbledon record you could be seeded number 3 or 4 mm. so yeah and and often what they do for these wild cards is they like to give a local perhaps 
a chance of to course. play in the Wimbledon. Like that's the Australian Open does it, US Open does it, the French does it. So it's great. Are you more of a grass clay or hard court? Well, I, I am a traditionalist. I do like the grass. But, uh, of course, Wimbledon <laughs> is the only major tournament. Yeah. They have the Australian Open used to be on grass in Kuyong, but they changed in 1989 to the hard courts. Oh, okay. A little easier to uh, maintain. But grass is grass is a lot more fun to play on, for sure. I was going to say, are you best on the grass? Uh, you know, probably not. <laughs> probably better on the hard courts. But I'm just saying it's more pure to play on grass. It's more pure. So, yeah, pure. More yeah. fun. Yes. Like baseball. Um you said the uh, Goran Ivanisevic, the only wild card winner. In men's game, you're right. Kim Kleisters did it, apparently. Oh, I remember game. that name. At the US Open, that would have been. I think she's coming out of retirement again. She retired at first because she had a baby, came back, won the US Open. Wow. Retired again. I think she's uh, back. She might just be playing doubles, though. Uh, US Open, you're right. Yeah. And uh, I, I opened this article, and there were three names, apparently, that had won the wild card in a Grand Slam. But the name was Lin Dan, and I'd never heard of that name. It was a Chinese badminton superstar. <laughs> he won a wild card as a wild card, a major badminton. Oh, tournament. oh! Okay. I was like, <laughs> wow. Okay. okay. Badminton player got a tennis tournament. Wild <laughs> yeah. Card. yeah, I was wow. like, crushed Jesus! It. They just lumped badminton and tennis together. Mm. Crazy. Pick'em results. <laughs> from last night <laughs> Clippers Thunder game uh, LAC was favored by three and a half on the road Lee and myself we like the Clips to stay hot with that full squad and they got it done that was a pretty dominant win mm -hmm. for the Clips over the Thunder so that's a win for Lee and I Tass and Trey take the L's still super early Tass 0-2 here in the month everybody else 1-1 one one. tonight's game it's on ESPN Luka Doncic versus Zion Williamson hello Wow. The worrisome part is... Did yeah. they flex this one, do you think? Was this a flexer? I don't think so. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, the Yeah, the Pels are now four games back of the eighth seed. So, backs against the wall, and there's three teams in between them and the eighth seed. But the Mavs are 3-0 against the Pels this season, but they haven't faced Zion. Six and a half is a decent amount of points yeah, that the Mavs have chunky. to win by. So, what you got in Dallas? I'm guessing Porzingis will be playing. Doncic will yes. be playing. Seth Curry's yes. been on a tear, but he missed Monday night. I'm hoping he's back. I think the Mavs have got, where, what is it, six and a half? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the Mavs have got seven points. I'll take them. Third game in four nights as well for the New Orleans Pelicans. So it's not just a back-to-back -back for Zion. Also, the three and four Mavs coming off a loss to the Bulls. How embarrassing. <laughs> Dallas. You're going Dallas? I guess. I'm going to go yeah. Pelicans. Mm. I think Gentry probably lit up those guys after that loss last night. And they watched some tape maybe or something and said, hey, nobody's playing defense. This is embarrassing. Maybe they put in a little stronger effort, I think, tonight on that end. Um, I, I like the Mavs. They're a great team. Uh, but I think they can keep it close enough. I think we might get a close one in this mm -hmm. one. So give me the Pelicans to cover. Give me a free throw to seal the seven points spread at the end. Ooh. I'll take Dallas. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm the only one taking New Orleans to cover the six and a half. Good luck to everybody. All right. It's another back-to-back -back Jacks type of day here in the No Dunks office. Yes, that's right. We got a new Say What? That's right. Coming out later today, so make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you do. And, uh... Yeah, check us out on YouTube, as Lee said, so you can see that beautiful tweet of the night. <laughs> also, I, I tweeted it, or I, I shouldn't say I tweeted it. I put it in the comments on YouTube. I want people out there to keep a running sort of record of every time Lee does a very dramatic yawn <laughs> on the show. Did you see yesterday's? I, it's crazy. Go to like the one hour and 11 minute mark of yesterday's, uh, I believe it was the Beef Steppin' podcast. Or maybe it was the deal. Yeah, it must have been. Lee does a crazy <laughs> on, and you're up to like a good three or four now already in the YouTube era. So somebody just keep track so we can cut them all together later in the year. Yeah, I forget we're on camera, you know? It's not you, the TV this studio anymore. This one is anymore. so insane. You're like, whoa, way back. <laughs> <sighs> what did you say, 111? Like, I think it's something like that. All right. Careful, if you watch somebody yawn, you're going to yawn again. Might be adding to the tally. <laughs> Clipper Bros. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, and remember. <sighs> these shows, these shows are long. I mean, with so much content hey, out there. Stay huh? in your lane. <laughs> Embrace the day, people. <laughs>